Today is February 3rd, 2015. Roll call of members, Mike Ahern, Chair, John Ranlett, Vice Chair, John Kelly, Stephen Rhodes, new member appointed by the Select Board, Bob Dragon, Bill Bolton, Selectman's Representative, and Rebecca Hansen, Conservation Commission. And um, Bob, you will be a voting member tonight. And let's see, we're going to move right on to item number three, which is public comments unrelated to what's on the agenda for tonight. Seeing nothing, we'll move right on to administrative matters. Oh, oh. Thought, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the unrelated part. Unrelated, yes. So that brings us to item number four, <laughs> the continuation of the public hearing from January 20th. Uh, it's proposed to limit the zoning, Plymouth Zoning Ordinance. It is a, uh, a public petition, and it is a change to the zoning article 11, Administration Enforcement, uh, with, which would uh, involve property registration. I do want to make a couple of comments before I reopen the public hearing portion. Seeing the, the amount of people here last hearing, and uh, I think that I allowed the meeting to get off target from what the purpose of the planning board, um, what our duty is, and our duty is to look at the proposed amendment and determine whether we want to, um, whether the board, individual members, would like to have this show up on the town ballot as recommended or not recommended. Uh, we went astray from what the protocol for the planning board's task is, and I did want to relay that information first. What we will do today is reopen the public hearing, and rather than go through and list all the different things that have already been listed and the same, the same arguments that have been put forward. What I would like to do is to entertain any questions that were lingered, if you, if you have answers to them or bring up anything new, we would love to be able to hear that before the board would then take it back and consider it. I'm thinking that the hearing might be, um, it could be brief, looking for just new information. We will limit it to three minutes. Uh, one other thing, and I'm not sure if the, the board fully realized when I asked uh, that the select board consider inviting the police chief um, that we would, didn't really realize that the police chief had signed the warrant of uh, uh, the proposed zoning amendment. So knowing that he had signed it, um, we're probably not going to have, we're not going to have him here because this is not the right venue to be discussing um, that. And there are other venues to be discussing how would we, other, other tools to control the behavior in, in the village or um, in the neighborhoods. And that is that there is a college community council whose meeting is, the next meeting is February 12th, Thursday at 4.30 at the town hall. And that is the proper forum or the proper venue to talk about issues that you're having um, with the college community. So, <clears throat> we are gonna now open back up the public hearing and I'll let you know whether we get off talk off target yes oh also um, Jules has mentioned that there was a little bit of an issue getting um, the names in and um, being able to hear all the all the testimony so we would ask you to come up to the podium state your name and your brief remarks more than three minutes. the time is 6.35 and I open up the public hearing. If there is anyone, uh, we're gonna go with town residents first that would like to speak 
in favor of the proposed uh, zoning? Yes, so you can stand like up. And... Good evening, board members. I'm Lynn Mitchell. I live at 5 Keeble Street, which is in the single residential zone. I hope that you approve this zoning amendment or recommend it for uh, town meeting. Um, I wasn't here January 20th. I, I won't hopefully repeat what's been said before. Um, what I'd like to suggest to you is that um, I think that the registration process will help ensure that the rental units are established in conformance with applicable codes and regulations of the town of Plymouth. But I want to give you two examples that I think are important for you to know. I live next to a dwelling that is two-family, and it was converted uh, to a two-family. It was uh, converted on a, on a zoning variance um, for two bedrooms. It's now advertised as three bedrooms. And so in terms of the registration process, we now have sort of an uh, excess of students coming and going, and that, I think, expands the parking. It expa there's signage that's not appropriate. There is um, added noise, added trash, and whatnot. There's a single family home next to that that also has five bedrooms, and yet they say there's only three unrelated <coughs> people in it, but there's four cars all the time. So in terms of uh, four, four out-of-state cars, from what I understand. So in terms of registration, I think that you're going to be able to help monitor and make sure that people are following the rules, following the regulations in a uh, more practical and uh, disciplined way. That, that I've spoken, obviously, with the town. Uh, zoning enforcement officer and he indicates that he can't manage how many bedrooms people have and whatnot and yet when something was uh, allowed to come in uh, allowed to come into the single family zone as a two family and it's expanded its use without any proper authorization I think this would give him the opportunity to do that so I thank you for your for your listening thank you would anybody else like to speak in favor of the proposed yes wedge has been prepared a handout for you, <coughs> dutifully. <laughs> um, not to go over anything that we went over last time, although I see you have a new board member tonight who was not at that hearing, so I think that's going to be a bit of an issue for him. Um, my husband last time spent a lot of time talking about how um, the petitioned article of which I was a signer, um, <clears throat> was supported by the master plan. I don't want to go back over that again, but I think that's an important uh, feature for us to keep in mind. And I won't, again, reiterate the same <coughs> issue that the uh, woman before me did, but one of the things that I would like to talk about tonight that I don't believe was talked about last time was how uh, failure to have our landlords complying with the existing zoning ordinance um, erodes the property values in Plymouth. Um, when you have a home in the single family, a, a residence in the single family home, in the single family zone that's not conforming to the regulations, it lowers the property values in the whole neighborhood. Um, and we certainly can't afford to have that happening in Plymouth. The other point I want to make is that these conversions in t from single family homes uh, into multiple family homes is continuing as we speak. There is evidence that comes up every day either by looking on Craigslist list or counting cars in neighborhoods where this is happening. So I hope that you will uh, support the petitioned amendment by giving it your recommendation for approval on the warrant. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak in favor of the proposed? No. Anyone from outside the town that would like to speak in favor? No. Yes. Actually, not from outside the town, but I missed my kid. My name is Mary Crowley, and I live in Plymouth. <coughs> and um, I, I have a question because um, I do support this amendment. And I do hope that the planning board will recommend it for approval. And I do recall at the earlier session of this hearing that um, I believe the town attorney had met with folks and suggested that this um, type of uh, uh, zoning amendment be proposed. But I can't remember. Did he actually approve this? 
Yes, he did. He did. Yes, the language. It's so the language. we have we have a town administrator, a code enforcement off officer, a police chief, a fire chief, and the town attorney. The town, at not to be misconstrued, is no, enforcing it. No, no, I know that. But, just, but we have those four individuals who signed the those the petition. Are, those four and then the town attorney approved also approved the language. the language. Only the language. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That, that was my point. I do hope you'll approve it. Is there anyone uh, left that would like to speak in favor of the proposed thing? Seeing no more, anybody that would like to speak uh, in opposition to the proposed? Yes. Um, my name is Annie Schneider, and I am uh, sorry to say that I don't know enough about the details. I was not here for the last meeting, so I'm somewhat uneducated. I would like to point out when somebody says we're watching our town change and our town is, you know, homes are being subdivided within the home, that we need to look at how our world is changing. And I know, like, I want to own my own home quiet for the rest of my life. That's how I was brought up and that's what I would love to see. But that is not what our next generation is seeing. Our next generation very likely isn't going to own a home or have a family in that kind of view that we have grown up with and we're comfortable with. But I don't know how many of people in this room have children who've maybe had to move back home again and or can't find jobs. They're living a different life now. And I think one of the things our town needs to do is, you know, we have to at least look at that and accept that our world is changing. A lot of these kids who are in college, they're not going to walk out with a degree and have the kind of hope and plans that you and I walked out with a degree and had in our hands. So they're going to be looking at a different world. So the fact that homes are being subdivided, I think we need to look at that as a part of reality. And we need to maybe you know make that work for us but to fight it and to dig our heels in against it is not going to help our own children i don't have kids i don't get to say that but plenty of people in this room have children and they've watched their children struggle financially into this next move it has not been the same move that you and i had that is that is my first issue the second issue is i do see this as a discriminatory situation between um, it's it's a divide between what people want to look at as traditional families and the college situation and we have seen harassment we have seen um, we have seen a lot of harassment within that and I can't answer for everybody in this room but um, my experience with college kids and being exposed to renting to them has been excellent. It has been excellent. And um, so anyway, I don't want to go too much, but we need to look at how this world needs to change and how things need to be divided up and to dig our heels in against it, I think, is a mistake. Thank you. Anyone else? Again, uh Town of Plymouth residents that would like to speak in opposition. Yes, Charlie. Uh, if you come up to the podium and state your name and your address. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's opposition, but uh, my name is Charlie Barker. I live at 26 High Street. So uh, I kind of live right on the line of the campus, college campus, and the residential area. Um, and I've had the house across me go from a family to um, college students and looking at this property registration uh, I have a few problems with it one is uh, I'm actually opposed to the fact that we're trying to get a fee out of the landlords for every house that they register I, I think that's you know just another tax that the town's trying to get money out of somebody's pocket for for somebody to shuffle some paperwork so I don't agree with that. I don't think we should charge the landlords a fee to register their houses. 
that being said, I, I think having this registration is a good thing, uh, and for two reasons. Uh, one is, I think, one, for the, um, you know, the way the town is having more kids park on lawns and all that, there's already those rules in place that aren't enforced. Uh, and I think having this might make it a little easier to enforce some of that. Uh, so I think that this might be a good thing. And the biggest thing is, uh, from a safety standpoint, if you've got a three bedroom house and you've got eight kids packed in there, heaven forbid if anything happens, trying to get people out of a house that's either on fire or there's some emergency. And you, you know, it's a three bedroom house, the guys that are going to go in and do some, you know, a search or whatever, they're expecting three people. They're not expecting eight. So I think having this might, might solve some of that problem. And it might keep homes that go from a three-room three house. I mean, that's fine. If college kids want to go in there, let's rent it to them. They're human beings, too. And I've got kids right across the street. And I, I've had one problem with them all year. And they've... You know, kids have been living there for years, and it's just, you got to go over and say, hey, guys, you're in a family neighborhood, you know, throwing F-bombs and staying up till 2 o'clock in the morning. You want to live here, that's great. Welcome to the neighborhood. Here's a shovel. But you got to, you know, you got to, you know, respect your neighbors, too. So I think that's a good thing for them to learn. And I don't think this is overly cumbersome for the landlords. I mean, maybe it is if they've got 100 kids, but it shouldn't be too hard to make it simple. So I, I'm for this, uh, but I think we should strike the fee thing. That really kind of, and I'm sure some of the landlords can say, geez, if I had to do this for every fee, $5 fee for everybody, you're kidding me, you hit me up with money. I think the town's really just, you know, that's the one thing that set me off, but I think this is a good thing. Thank you. Uh, one thing I want to re remind people is that uh, we are talking um, specifically about this um, um, this amendment, and Charlie did um, make reference to the amendment several times, but I want to make sure that some of the things that, that might have been talked about is going towards what should be a topic at the CCC, the um, College Community Council meeting. So is there anyone else? that would have a comment in opposition to the proposed amendment. Uh, I'm Kim Lamb and I live on 10 Bell Road and I am in opposition. I know this is bigly targeted towards these kids. Kids. I own properties that we actually rent to graduate students and professors and that is a big huge part of what we do and this is targeting in those ways those people that we need to rent to like what annie was saying it's a different world um, i have one guy that's been in my apartment for six years that's a professor so there is a subgroup and the university is trying to expand their graduate programs and pull in more because everybody's dwindling on the university side so they're trying to figure out how to stay <clears throat> above water so we need these properties for, I can't tell you how many calls I get for graduate students looking. So there are a whole, there's this very s small subgroup of troublemakers and on a whole, the, most of them are responsible. So I think this will hurt people that are actually looking to purchase properties for that reason. Maybe they need to cater to graduate students or professors or those subgroup that don't have the money to buy a house. Thank you. Yes, uh, Town of Plymouth still? I Zach Stope. I um, live on Artisan Lane here in Plymouth. Uh, I just want to say uh, I can sympathize with uh, anyone who lives next to um, the college kids, as a lot of people had mentioned. Uh, I used to live on Langdon Street, um, so uh, you know I've experienced uh, a lot of this thing. Uh, I'm against this ordinance for a lot of reasons, and uh, I would hope that uh, you guys um, don't recommend this. Um, the registration uh, isn't going to change uh, what uh, you know people uh, get rented to right there, and. Um, you know, as far as uh, collecting information, the town already has uh, a lot of this information. Uh, I can look up on the town's very own website and um, tell you the um, the name of the owner of every uh, property on Merrill Street uh, going right down, and you get their address uh, right off the assessor's department. 
Uh, I think that, uh, you know, adding this is uh, an undue burden on the landlords that are doing a good job. And uh, the scope of it's going to affect a lot more people than just the downtown student area that they're trying to, uh, to target. Um, you know, the zones that they say uh, will um, be affected, uh, they exist outside of the, uh, the village. And, you know, it seems as though it's discriminatory and, uh, you know, you can't single out one group. Um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, as Bob Dragon said last week, uh, you know, this needs to be an enforcement issue and shifting the focus away from, uh, you know, penalizing the landlords that are uh, doing a, a good job um, and, the, you know, the landlords that uh, aren't doing a good job managing them. Um, they're probably not going to do it anyway. And then the people that are, you know, working toward this, um, you know, working toward, you know, having a, you know, a nice coexistence, uh, you know, are the ones that are paying the fee. Um, I just, uh, I sincerely hope the board members do not recommend this and uh, it really does nothing to address the issues. It only creates the burden for good, good landlords. Anyone else that would like to speak in opposition? Yes, John. Before I get started on my remarks, I would like to bring up one point that I kept hearing from almost everyone. Can you state your name and I'm sorry. Address? My name is John Harnois. I live at 3 Pearl Street. <coughs> They're not kids. They're adults. If the, if the federal government says poop at the stroke of midnight of your 18th birthday, you're an adult, okay, let's treat them like adults. Let's raise the bar, not lower it, because when you call them kids, you do two things. You allow the young adult a way out of accepting responsibility for their actions, and the, <coughs> excuse me, the consequences of their actions. Two, you allow the adult a way to blow it off by saying, oh, well, boys will be boys. Let's call them young adults and treat them like that. I, I know I, I, I'm a founding member of the College Council, and I kept hearing that, and I kept injecting that into the meetings. They're adults. That said, I'm sorry, I just had to say that. Um, I've been a resident of uh, the town of Plymouth for 40 years and a landlord for about 30 years. Um, I'm against this article for several reasons. You can put lipstick on a fee, but it's still a tax because it's mandatory. I don't get to choose. If this goes through, I have to pay. I'm paying $7,100 in property taxes now. How much more am I gonna have to pay? I don't know. This is vague. Also, um, it's, it's discriminatory because it's against a certain segment of our community, namely landlords. Uh, and if, if the town is going to charge landlords a fee for safety issues, then maybe everybody that has young adults, students, be charged a tax. I, I think that would be fair. Um, it does not um, uh, address the behavioral problems that I think are at, at the real heart of this issue. This ordinance does not do that at all. What I would suggest, and you brought this up, is bring back some of the things that the college council used to do, mainly block, uh, block parties. I'd kick in some money, we'd have some hamburgers, some hot dogs, some soda, put some names to the faces so that it doesn't become an us against them type of mentality and us against them type of an issue. You're putting names with them and, and people understand you have a problem, let's talk about it. Because talking about it is much more, uh, uh, is, is a much better situation and, and solution to problems than forcing things on people. And, and lastly, when is enough enough? I mean, are we going to have a color code enforcement officer someday that we have to pay a fee to, to, to check in and see if uh, uh, I, I can paint my property a certain color or is somebody going to come by and say, hey, your grass is kind of high, I better cut that. We're going to charge you. We're going we're to fine you. When's enough enough? When did the intrusion stop? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I, just, um, I have a point of order, I just think just for clarification. Uh, the zoning amendment before the planning board was brought forward by the public, by public petition. It was not written by the planning board. And because it was brought forward by the public, 
with 25 signatures of registered voters. Um, none of none of the syntax uh, or, the, or the verbiage that is on the amendment can be changed. So I just want that really clear. I, I know there's some folks here that weren't at the meeting last time, but this is uh, in its format as presented to the board for recommendation or non-recommendation. There are absolutely no changes allowed, and it is by public petition. You did not author it. You're just either giving a re recommendation as a board or not. Thank you for Thank clarifying, you. Sharon. Yep. Yes. In the sorry, can you Mace, I, I can't. I'm not. I'm, I'm just looking for a little bit of context. Nick Mason, 57 Merrill Street, North Star Rentals, as well. Um, nothing in the wording of this specifies that it's in the downtown area or that it is college student rental. Uh, in my interpretation of it, this would, if you have, if you live out on Route 3A or Tenney Mountain Highway or somewhere and you have an in-law apartment, you would have to register as well. Am I correct in that? Yes, you are. Um, the actual, uh, excuse me, but the text, the text of the amendment speaks to zoning areas, so that's how you right. figure out where. Right. So basically possible. anybody anywhere in the town. I mean, we know. It says owners of property who rent any portion of their property. Right will be responsible for the Okay. Um, speaking to a little bit of what's been said, one problem I had, I, I addressed it last time, the vague wording of this. Uh, if it said an annual fee, then we would understand this essentially as a tax. If it said a one-time fee at the time of registering, that would provide a little bit of clarity on what we can expect going forward. Um, and then uh, sort of the last I feel like I had one more thing I was going to say, but of course I'm forgetting it now that I'm standing up here at the microphone. Um, I'll have to come back up. <laughs> okay. I'll turn it the floor. So obviously there's no wording changed, and this affects everybody. The, I know that the root of this problem really can be traced to one specific house. I mean, 90% of the conversations that we've had at last meeting, at the meeting with the lawyer, and at various CCC meetings have been in regards to 29 Merrill. So we know that's a problem, and I know I'm not going to speak for the other landlords, but I'm sure that everybody in this room would love to solve the 29 Merrill problem. I'm sure that everybody in this room would like to solve the problem of college neighborhoods encroaching on everybody. I don't know that this is the right tool. I don't, I don't know that this actually is going to do much of anything, to be honest with you. And the, la oh, and the last part I was going to... Um, everybody who rents in this town, there's been a lot of talk that somehow these single family houses that are being bought are being turned into multi-unit dwellings. And that might be true occasionally, but I would say in general that is probably not true um, because everybody who rents, what are you getting a lot of questions from when people call? What are they looking for? They want a whole house. I mean, that's, that's it becoming more and more something that people are looking for. They are actively seeking a freestanding single family home um, because they don't want a neighbor above them or below them who are telling them to quiet down or call the cops. So that's become something that people are actively pursuing when they are looking for apartments is a single family home, which is making that more of a desirable rental for both local landlords as well as, you know, absentees. Thank you. Just for clarity. And I, I do want to clarify. Um, Nick said this, this um, petition, proposed petition, to ensure public safety and further zoning compliance, owners of property within the single-family residential, multifamily residential, civic industrial, and village commercial zones. Are there other zones that are going to be part of this or just those no, zones? No, this is as written. Okay. Absolutely so he, no he said that anybody who rents within the town of Plymouth was no. his question. No, that was not his question. Unless okay. their property comes under one or more of these zones. Does that answer your question, Nick? Yes. I don't believe agriculture does because no. there's no agriculture in the center of town. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure what the, what the. I don't know how that map is, but I believe it's outside of the town. Zone. Which I know we can't change it. We can't change the wording, but it's no less tragic if somebody dies in a fire 
in an uninspected apartment in the agricultural zone than it is Downtown. Or an unregistered family. Me, there's out of order. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. Sorry. So we're going to move on. And again, part of the topic that was just talked about 29 Merrill, that would be uh, something to be brought up at a college community council meeting. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition of the proposed amendment? Yes, outside of town now. Go ahead. I'm Arlene Stope. I currently live in Ashland, New Hampshire, but for a lot of years I lived in Plymouth. Um, and some of those years was beside uh, both student rentals and uh, year-round people. Uh, this ordinance here, um, I don't think, I'm, I'm, I hope you do, do not uh, endorse it. I don't think it addresses any of the real issues that we were hearing uh, about the problems. We already have uh, a town inventory, so you get people's names and phone numbers and addresses. Uh, so this would just be duplicate of what we already have on the books. Uh, in addition to that, uh, what, what I think the, the ordinance is missing uh, is how how you do address these problems. There's ways to address these problems that are out there. And you've got a lot of people here with a lot of experience and expertise who've been doing it for, for me, 31 years. Um, but the college addresses these problems. We address these problems. These landlords that are here, we all address these problems, these behavioral problems. This ordinance is trying to address behavioral problems, but the way it's written, it doesn't do it. It does not address any behavioral problems at all. All it does is duplicate what we already have on the books for giving name and address and phone number, property owners, and then putting an additional burden on charging some unknown fee. Um, it, in the last meeting, it did come down to people were saying, well, yeah, this seems like it's more of an enforcement issue. I think that you do need to go back to what the College Community Council is doing, what they have done in the past, what landlords have done. The school has a disciplinary board. We have all kinds of tricks up our sleeves on how we deal with these issues. But it takes a community to do it. It takes the neighbor. It takes the people. It takes the police. It takes the code enforcer officer, possibly. Uh, maybe not because, you know, people having some of the behaviors they're exhibiting is not a code, code enforcement issue. Um, but this particular uh, write-up doesn't address any of those things. And it doesn't have any solutions for any of those things. I'm a solutions kind of person. Let's go to people who have successfully solved these issues and do what they do. We write to the parents. We write to the school disciplinary board. We have them go before the school disciplinary board. Um, we contact police if we need to. Uh, the school can, for, can have them go to counseling. There's a lot of avenues here to change the behavioral problem that we're having without putting a duplicate ordinance that's just going to burden the town for duplicate effort and cost the, the landowners a lot of money that is a complete mystery. This thing is very vague, and I really hope that you do not endorse it. Thank you. Thank you, Arlene. Is there anybody else that would like to speak in opposition of the proposed amendment? Yes. I'm Brian Keller, uh, Webster Hill Road, Plymouth. I was one of the original signers of the petition because some of the parts of the petition had merit and still do. But on hearing the discussion of it, um, the elements of the discussion is not about the types of houses or zones or land use regulations. They deal with disorderly actions of people who are living in those particular areas. And so I believe that this uh, process of trying to use the planning and land use regulations to control people's actions uh, and or to mitigate disorderly actions by residents is inappropriate. When uh, RSA 
47 colon 17 paragraph 2 which is order and police duty when that is the order that is the authority to act granted to uh, council city councilmen and board of selectmen to enforce noise ordinance disorderly conduct uh, and other things through the law enforcement community that's just what their name is law enforcement community and so if we have an element of the type of subdivision of a house in a single family, multi family, triple family, that would be something that would come before the Planning and Land Use Board effectively. But the fact is, what we have is an issue of people not um, being mindful and, and uh, kind to their neighbor and getting out of hand in a disorderly manner. And um, that isn't something that the planning board uh, really needs to try to get into enforce. I think that's something through our law enforcement community. We have town ordinances, which are through the Board of Selectmen's authority to act. And we have the um, uh, authority to act of the law enforcement community that works for that board to enforce our ordinances as written. And I suggest that I would recommend not supporting this uh, petition. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition of the proposed amendment? Hello, I am Don Weigel for Mineral Lakes Properties and thank you, thank you Mr. Chair for the chance to speak and address you. Um, thank you for clarifying that we can't change any of the, this language. I do wanna, one thing is still, I maybe a little slower than some of us here tonight, but does this cover every zone in the town? Which zones are specifically excluded? I believe it's just the agricultural zone. Um, thank you. I guess I really would have to say to Mr. Miller, um, very well done. This is a planning board that represents the town, all the town all the town, all the zones. <coughs> I am against this amendment, petition, whatever we want to call it, because it's not for the whole town. Number two, the ambiguity in it. When you put in things, once register, the owner shall properly report any changes. Define any changes. A new car, um, our properties change every four months. Roommates hate roommates, they fight, they can't get along with each other, even though they chose to blah, 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 blah. Changes occur. So what is the definition of that change? The ambiguity in here, um, number two, it's not all the town, and number three, cost. Um, I am a little surprised by the petition that's even here because we seem to have in place a very good scenario right now. I know when we call the code officer, and ironically, we're having an issue, not with a rental, with a year-round single family that abuts one of our properties, two of our properties. This ordinance doesn't solve that. But whenever we do call, we do get a response. I've watched the university, the police department, go and meet proactively with houses that have been problems or issues. In reading the minutes from the last meeting that you folks had, it seemed to be about behavior of one or two properties. Been doing this for 35 years in your town, and the pendulum swings one way, swings the other way, and goes back. Yes, there are problem houses. Yes, there will be problem houses next year. It all depends on how we deal with them. We have a very, very responsive code officer. We have a very, very responsive police department. We have a very, very responsive university. If we're gonna make an amendment that's gonna change behavior, we failed. It isn't gonna work. Planning board should be looking at land uses, how properties are being used, what's been approved and what hasn't been approved and enforcing that through the rules that we already have in place. I ask you to look carefully at the language in 
picture this if this was your property would you be happy with that language being enforced upon you secondly we're all very concerned with taxes in this town and if we think one code officer with some ministerial assistance can handle this you're foolish you will be looking at additional costs so once again mr Wimp miller very well spoken very well addressed and i thank you for your time anyone else that would like to speak in opposition and I would open it up to um, anyone who'd like to speak of just a general nature before we bring it back to the board and close the hearing. Yes. Um, thank you. My name is Kevin Young. I live on 2 Langdon Park Road. Uh, I addressed uh, the committee uh, last time and uh, will not review that. I would like to um, say that uh, I was someone who got 27 signatures in support of this from the local community. There are two neighborhoods here who are specifically watching the actions of the board at this point. That uh, they are looking to the board uh, uh, to see if there is support for maintaining the quality of our uh, neighborhoods and in helping us control problems. Uh, I think after the last meeting there was a consensus that uh, there were enforcement issues and that there were major uh, events and activities going on that the uh, purpose of this meeting to my understanding was to find out why enforcement was not being done and whether it could be done uh, whether uh, existing um, codes could be enforced without uh, this particular provision that I haven't heard too much uh, addressed to that. Uh, I will say that one event since the last meeting involved uh, uh, the town uh, uh, enforcement officer who um, uh, took a complaint from one of these community groups uh, that had to do with a Craigslist advertisement for a five bedroom uh, student house uh, in town. It was actually apparently put on by someone who spoke in opposition to this at the last meeting that the code enforcement officer uh, did uh, handle that to the neighborhood satisfaction. Uh, but uh, we are still um, impressed that uh, enforcement remains a problem. And uh, we are watching to see whether um, these things can be enforced uh, we were hoping that this uh, board could uh, get input from the chief of police and from enforcement officers about why uh, things were having problems. But until uh, that is done, I don't know why the board would uh, conclude that requiring registration does not assist on that. Uh, the community groups are being told that uh, getting into a house requires a search warrant that requires data collection um, and it is a process that uh, is uh, difficult and that is the basis of the enforcement. Uh, this is a way of getting into the buildings without a search warrant and we're hearing uh, um, uh, people say that uh, it should be enforceable. Um, the town lawyer is saying it's not. The police chief is saying it's not. I, I would appreciate it if this uh, uh, board would address uh, uh, enforcement issues uh, uh, in, uh, by sorting some of that out. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure if you were here at the beginning of the meeting when we, before we opened up the hearing, but I did mention that um, this was not going to be the proper venue to have the uh, police chief here and speak, that our job was got off task a little bit and that we were just going to address the proposed amendment and not try and solve any problems that would be the job of the community the college community council to deal with those issues so that kind of answers a little bit i just have a quick question Mike. Um, yes charlie barker again 26 landing is the in, the code enforcement officer does he run through this board or through i believe the, the board of selectmen the board of selectmen so really to have the discussion about enforcement of that's correct the rules that are already in place that are placed by you and the select board is through the select board. Is that correct? Yes. 
And I mean, just to, you know, and, and I, I agree with you, Mr. Young, is that, you know, enforcement's probably the biggest problem. Right. And our, our job as the planning board is very limited in that our, we are to look at proposed zoning amendments and, and have a hearing and decide amongst the board whether we recommend it passing or not. Just a, another point of information, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the request to have the code enforcement officer and the chief of police here, um, the protocol was to bring it before the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen, and, and Mr. Bolton can speak to that, um, took it under advisement and felt that this was not the proper venue for that. And also, as you had said earlier, that um, the, the signature of those parties on the petition did speak to this particular amendment, but, but it, was, it was apples and turnips, very much so. so. I just wanted to clarify that the board, the board of selectmen, which is the, you know, the authority um, in these issues, did decide that it, in, you know, um, judiciously that this was not the correct venue for that. All right. Yes. I have a couple questions, may I ask? Them? Sure. Come on up. Thank you. One question, and, and I think I and know. And state the your name again, please. Mary Crowley. Sorry. I'm still Mary Crowley, um, ever so. Um, I think I know the answer to this question, but I, um, I would ask one of you folks or Sharon to um, clarify for me. The, um, the zoning ordinances for the town of Plymouth have different areas designated and different um, standards or rules regarding anything from signage to construction to um, density can vary from zone to zone, correct? So the fact that the agricultural zone isn't included in this isn't necessarily a huge departure from other parts of the zoning ordinance where, you know, the village commercial district, for instance, is treated differently than the uh, full commercial district versus the agricultural district. Is that? Every zone essentially has a formula, uh, usually based on dimensional requirements, with the exception, and of course, that's why the zoning ordinance is, is so um, aggravating, shall we say, to implement at some <coughs> points, um, because the general rules of thumb that you'll find in the tables uh, lot sizes, mm -hmm. this and that, don't necessarily apply, for example, in the village commercial zone because it's too compact. Um, so there's the dimensional use on one side. The, the other portion of the formula is what is prescribed in terms of occupancy. That's pretty standard. Um, no more than three unrelated. However, if you have individual dwelling units in a building like an apartment house, then it's, it's a maximum of six, but it's also based on um, area so so it's a little squirrely um in terms of the agricultural district or or the commercial industrial district industrial development district that was not addressed excuse me in the language of this they operate by the same formulas we i can't as the planner and the board can't speak to why they were left out because this is a publicly proposed petition. They just were. No, we no, no. I wasn't asking no, you to do that. I was just asking within our zoning ordinances, there there are variations. Right, but the same, the same, uh, the there same. There are zoning ordinances. I guess I'm asking: Are there some zoning ordinances that affect a particular or some particular um, zones differently than others? Right, I would have to look at the table, but um, rental housing is definitely um, allowed in the agricultural zone if it meets the criteria. So okay. there's. So that was one question that I had. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and the other question is regarding the issue of fees, because um, fees are set by the select board. And Bill, maybe you can tell me whether or not at the time at which the select board if, for instance, this were to pass, um, at the time that the select board might uh, calculate a fee, and it would look at um, some of the things that have been discussed here tonight. You know, does the fee get assessed annually? Does it get assessed 
on a per um, registration basis and at that point is there an op those those conversations are they public conversations where folks who are concerned about fees in this room could address themselves to the select board they should be public yeah. and uh, for the fact that we have three board members here tonight I think um, you know we will we know now that this shall be public yeah thank so, you so uh, so there is you know if there is another place beyond this room where um, input may be shared around fairness of fees, appropriateness of fees, how they might look. Yeah, thank you. Those were my two questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. Is there any more comments of a general nature before we close the public hearing? Yes. Thank you. I'm still in Mitchell. Okay. Um, I just, I, I guess like Mary, I just have a question. Is there any uh, zoning ordinance in the town right now that allows the zoning enforcement officer to administratively um, inspect single family homes or two family homes in the town, if anybody knows? Well, it, I can only speak generally to that, Lynn. Um, I think, you know, the overarching authority is life safety code, so it would be fire department. So it really depends. I mean, when you have a rental unit, it has different criteria. Right. So if it's just a single family home, then it's the normal thing, unless there's an overt violation. Um, and the, so what's defined as an overt well, violation? Well, health and safety. Okay, so yeah. it's only health and safety. So if in fact there might be or, or a violation, no. there might be four unrelated people in four cars. Well, there's, there's you can't go inside the home to check and see if there are actually four well, people living there. It has to um, come to the level of a warrant in its truest sense. I mean, not, not conjecture, not theoretical, not somebody thought they saw it. I mean, it, it has to be brought to. So I can't go into the, f I mean, I've got a neighbor who I, I can't hey, no, go into his home we're, to find that out, and I'm not asking to get to into to those details. I understand. But in terms of trying to maintain the integrity of the neighborhoods, when you have rental homes in the single family neighborhoods, and they're having lots of students and lots of parking issues and whatnot, if there's no way to inspect currently, that's what this speaks to, is that you can go and inspect to make sure that the dwelling unit is being used as is committed in that zone so that so that if you have a single family it's, it's a tool it which be. might support that depending on the particular sit and i'm not being evasive but it's always depending on the particular situation and the nuances and it, like i said it every situation is different i i understand no, that i understand it really that. is and, because and the criteria is different because these the particulars are different but that's why you would have an inspection to make sure that they meet with the rules essentially right and so if, well, you've got a two if you've got a two rules, family that was right. allowed to go but two family any ordinances that are being violated have to be violated life safety codes and and noise ordinances that are not the same type of um, redress if you will because the triggers are different right yeah. I understand and so this one at least says okay let's maintain the integrity of the of the neighborhood by having um, a registration so that this home is registered for three bedrooms or this homes registered for two bedrooms, although you can have three fam three, sing uh, three um, unrelated people living there, but you can only have two bedrooms or whatever it is. So if you were registered for what was appropriate for that home or what was allowed for that home, um, you would be able to maintain sort of the integrity of that particular dwelling on, on each occasion, correct? I lost you. I'm sorry. Anybody it's else that's... follow me? <coughs> yes, no? All right. Do you? Yeah, yeah, I guess I can I follow you. Okay. Um, so this, I mean, being able to administratively inspect, that's what I'm trying to understand. So we well, don't have a zone, we don't have a, an ordinance for that. And this proposed amendment can basically say, they can put anything they want in there. Right. And no matter what, it gets voted on by ballot. Correct. I understand that. And at that point, I mean, it, it can say anything that might be or, or could be or may not be yep. legal, but it, it's... There's nothing we can do about it here. I understand. And there's, we, I don't think we have a definitive answer. None of us are attorneys. No, but the attorney looked at it and said, legally, it's okay. Yes. He's not the supporting language, it. The language. The language is okay. The format, the I, syntax. Okay, got that's, it. That's all he can speak to. I understand. Yeah. So he, he wouldn't have supported something that was oh, no. inappropriately legal. No, no, he's neutral. I'm not asking what his position was. I was just right. asking what, that he supported the legal 
posture of the of the ordinance. The language. Right. Yeah, Bill. but he, he would say it would be contrary to law if, if after reading it, it looked contrary to law, which he did not. Right. So, That's I mean, what I'm trying to understand. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak of a general nature before we close the public hearing? Um, I'll go with you first and okay, then Frank. I'll, I'll be very brief. Um, just, um, it's Annie Schneider. Just um, if this is related to registering people and some of it obviously has people's concern about how many people are in a house, if they're unrelated, they're related or whatever. Um, I guess I still find it discriminatory in that if it's, it's still rental, so any landlord, still rental, and it's a family and they're all related, and you don't always necessarily know exactly minute to minute, nor do I think you're really allowed to check or go into the house and see in a family who's registered, who's not, how many people, you know, how many cousins are there or whatever. So, you know, I find it discriminatory with to be able to, to have this whole registration to base it on you can only come in out of safety. Well, what about some big clog of a family who may or may not be safe? I just think it is, I really hope that you will look at this carefully and decide that this is, this is not the subject that this paper is trying to address. And I hope you will turn this down. Thank you. Yes, Frank. previous uh, discussion about uh, conditions of houses and so on, but all the powers of the various uh, department heads like fire chief, police chief, uh, all come through uh, the Board of Selectmen under RSA 47 colon 17, and I think it would be nice if people would actually go online and read the purpose and intent of the duties and responsibilities of the Board of Selectmen to um, ensure the quality of life and quality of living within a town and their powers are quite because extensive there's a quite a bit of list on them but the things that Ben just discussed are contained in RSA 47 colon 17 and as far as conditions of housing RSA 48 right behind 47 talks specifically about conditions of houses and the process in which the health officer or the fire chief or police chief or whatever may take the appropriate legal, lawful, and valid action for mitigation of it, okay? So that process within that, that RSA system, by the way, that uh, started back in 1763. Our zoning ordinance, we started in 1961. Um, I think the action to try to uh, facilitate uh, people who are, don't have a good idea of uh, orderly living within a neighborhood, whichever neighborhood, um, need uh, a process through the law enforcement community under the power and jurisdiction of the Board of Selectmen and not the land use regulation system. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak of a general nature before we bring it back to the Board? Yes. Briefly? Very, very brief. Just Arlene Stope, uh, Ashland. Um, I just want to say my experience with uh, living in a neighborhood with both students near next door and year round next door, quite honestly, the year round people were actually more obnoxious than the students. Uh, the students had their occasional party, but the year round people left their dog tied up 24-7, 365 days a week. The dog was cold. It was barking 5 o'clock every morning, every single day. So this ordinance is not going to change the fact that you could have a bad neighbor, whether it's a year-round person or whether it's a student. And it really, you, you really have to, rather than put more ordinances on the books than you've already got, the inventory uh, forms where we put all of that stuff down. You put down, you know, who's in the house and the name of the landlord and the address. All of that information you have, this is just going to be a repeat of that um, and an extra burden on both the town and us. Thank you. Seeing no more uh, the public hearing, I'll 
close it at 729 and bring it back to the board. John. Uh, <clears throat> I'd just like to say, I mean, the, the, the amendment is written. It's going to be on the ballot. Uh, the whole process is, uh, again, does the planning board support this amendment or do we not support it? And I think that's, you know, nobody can change it. It is what it is. It's legally brought forward. It'll be on the ballot and the citizens of Plymouth can decide. Anyone else who would like to talk about the proposed amendment? Bill? Well, I, I do agree that um, you, you can't assure good neighbors. Um, and this is not, or the intent for this is not to assure that. Um, but I'm thinking that the intent for this particular uh, amendment is to just provide a tool for um, the code enforcement person, the town planner, to see um, exactly what is being utilized by uh, the rentals in this town. And uh, uh, it may be targeted to certain zones. Um, that may be where the problems, you know, are focused. But um, I think it's since it's met the bar of the uh, of attorney review, and it is a tool, if not complete, for providing data to um, the um, you know town co code enforcer. It just seems like it's. Um, you know, kind of an innocuous tool to put in effect, and I would support it. But. Did you say you would support it? I did. Thank you. Anyone else on the board would like to speak? <clears throat> yes, Bob. <clears throat> Very sympathetic to both the pros and cons, as I said at the last meeting, on this issue. But I still think enforcement is the key. Uh, I think the petitioners probably should petition board of select the select board to tell them they have these problems and find out what we have on the books that we can do to enforce these uh, with the police, the fire, whatever. Uh, see if there's some room there to reach this problem, but at this point I Just seriously again have a, a, a real problem with the uh, uh, Enforcement of this and are we gaining anything so uh, I, I think the the board of select board should get involved with the petitioners and, and try that Avenue before we get into something like this. Thank you. May I no. continue? So I, I would agree with that, but at least the start for that is to discover. And, and actually, um, last uh, hearing, uh, Gabe, I forgot the guy, uh, yeah. Gabe's is last that name. Yeah, check, yeah. So, you know, he was citing different statutes, and one, one of them was uh, RSA 5, 540. And, um, in 540, um, it does indicate that you know, any there should be a tool in effect that any housing code adopted by a municipality pursuant to RSA 48A, which um, Mr. Miller was referring to, or for the enforcement of any municipal health code, building code, or fire um, and life safety code, a municipality may establish a reasonable filing fee to cover the cost to the town or city clerk of maintaining a record of the filings required by the section. You know, it, it indicates that there should be like a discovery tool to, to find out what exactly is being done in a rental. Um, you know, should it be the number of people, you know, residing there? I mean, it's beyond just a name and a phone number and address of an owner. You know, it's exactly what, you know, what the conditions are for that particular establishment. Um, and RSA 540 does, you know, accommodate that. So that would be a useful tool for the code enforcer and the select board to utilize and take action from. But I do have a question. Yes. How, how many rental properties are there in town now? 
I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I mean, sometimes you can have, I mean, a commercial property or a house with, you know, renting a room or an apartment. This is this is. I guess my my question goes back to the to the um, order of magnitude of the fees that are going to be required to support the effort. And uh, someone was saying that it's more than a full time job to go around and police all these rentals. So we're we looking at another yeah. town employee that, you know, sixty grand a year. What I don't know. I don't think the outcome of this would be to then hire a staff person. No. I think the outcome of this would be to establish a database, you know, come up with an access data, you know, be able to collect this data, come up with a form to collect the data. And, you know, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't incorporate a, a new staff person, I assume. You know, it would be more, well, you know, so I think it's just targeting, you know, the actual tool itself and to then compile all the data. We have, Steve, we have land use records by property, but that doesn't necessarily tell us what's going on unless it's overt. That's, you know, so, yeah, the data's there, but it's not a data set that's configured for use of ease, or ease of use. <laughs> So I guess my further on question would be the, the rented portion is subject to administrative inspection. So that is going to be part of this data collection process or? You know? So you know, actually referring back to Gabe, um, it's inconsequential whether that language is there or not, theoretically. That's his interpretation of it for the fact that we can do administrative inspections. Um, and you know, the code enforcer, I think, has, has done that with um, the police chief of, uh, so I think if, if yeah, there are, uh, is there, if there's evidence that is contrary to the code that indicates a violation, then the administrative uh, inspection could occur. Without this is what you're saying? I think this. Or with this, it's the only this way. This is definitely a clarification, um, and it's a statement of fact that probably already exists, but, um, you know, there's no, no, no problem with that. So you're saying your interpretation is that, and I, I didn't hear the, the um, I s haven't heard the, the town attorney speak to this, but you have, and you're saying that it, it clarifies for the town employees that inspection would be easier of rental property. So I don't think it, it be, well, I don't think it becomes easier to do administrative inspection. It still has to be a finding of there, there are, there are. Once again, it's the same old thing. There's the state RSAs, which apply to certain aspects of tenancy of rental units, depending on how they're quantified. You know, three or more restricted properties. So you've got all this miasma of stuff going over here, and then you have it on the local level. And sometimes they intersect, and sometimes they don't. So, so there are statute or RSAs statutes that that apply to the rental property arena but it's usually once again very specific to what's happening on the property is it an apartment house is it does the landlord own three or more properties in a town and then you know that triggers that kicks in an inventory form that comes out of the town clerk's office this once again it's government and it's not here to help you it's here to confuse you and um i believe that was the premise of as it was explained to me by the authors, their intent was to have this used as a tool. Now, that's, we have to look at it on its face. It's prima facie. Anything else the board would like to <coughs> speak? I made my opinion clear at last hearing. I don't. Well, if I need to reiterate that, I, uh, I feel that the landlords are being targeted to a, to a, uh, a pretty high degree. I, um, I have some issues with it, but it's, it's obviously the entire board's vote, and we get to not make any decisions. All we get to do is to vote whether we recommend approval not or not. Do you and that want would go to the town ballot for the public to make this decision 
It is not the planning board that makes any decision on this, on whether it is passed or not. Mr. Chairman, just a just a uh, point of qualification. So, our recommendation is that it be put on the town warrant. It's going to be on the town warrant already. It's already going to be on there. So yes. we're recommending that it pass. Right. Correct. Recommend no. and approve. Or recommend. Or no. Recommend or not recommend, recommend approval. approval. Right. So the voters approve it. And I believe it's just if it's a majority. I believe it would say the planning board recommends approval if it's majority. Against it, it would say the planning board uh, does not recommend passage. And you would have a simple majority here because you have all seven of you. It wouldn't be a tie vote because there are no abstentions allowed in this particular vote. So it would be very clear. Oh, and by the way, just another point of clarification, because um, we have been looking into this carefully, doing our due diligence. Um, we spoke with the town's attorney. The, the language that is included above a warrant article that says, for example, the Board of Selectmen um, recommend approval, do not recommend approval, the Planning Board recommends, does not recommend, that is ambivalent. It's ambiguous and it cannot be changed because we looked into perhaps having a little more clarification, but it would have to occur in the legislature as a change to the RSA. So you've got to go with that verbiage. The planning board recommends approval, obviously by majority vote, or the planning board does not recommend approval. So it's, it's clear as mud. If everybody, I guess, has their minds made up on how they're going to vote, then I'd say that we're ready for a motion. If we're not, if you don't think that you are ready and you have a couple more questions, feel free to speak your mind before we do vote. Seeing no other uh, hands up, then I would take a motion. Yes, Mr. Bill. Chair, I recommend that we uh, recommend approval of the um, proposed petition. So, there is a second by Mr. Kelly. Uh, the motion to approve by Bill Bolton. I will call for um, all those in, in favor of recommending approval signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, could I see a show of hands, please? Thank you. Those opposed signify by saying nay. Nay. It looks like it's four to three. And the uh, proposed amendment will go on the ballot with the planning board recommending approval. We'll take a minute and let the uh, the room clear, and then we'll go on with our meeting. I know my form's going to say. My form's going to say. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so that brings us to item number five, correspondence. Uh, none at this point. Brings us to item number six, new business. Uh, we have a regularly scheduled work session the day after tomorrow, which is Thursday, and we were anticipating Tara Bamford from North Country Council to come and start introducing the master plan process. She's got the flu. 
she's been very sick. She did let me know on Monday she was out um, a half of last week. So she will not be showing up, unfortunately, till our next work session in March. Um, we do have that on the books. Um, we've got two sets of minutes. We've got the new land use books, which I'm happy to say are in larger print for all of us older 25. They're <laughs> twice as thick. I was so excited you could actually read it without a magnifying glass. So we have that to um, just be an administrative stuff and whatever else the board wants to bring up. But we will not be discussing um, the RFP work um, schedule because she's ill. I'm sorry. And that would be in two days. That's the day after tomorrow, right back here. Any yeah. suggestions? So we will meet Thursday. Are you thinking, John? We will meet Thursday unless anybody has. I'll call you from Florida to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get those minutes out to you, the draft minutes, because the ones from the 20th are fairly ponderous. So there's a lot to uh, discuss. All right. So we will, will we have anything else to talk about with the master plan? Anything else that we could bring up? No, I'm just hoping everyone did, like I asked you to last time, take the original RFP and what North Country Council submitted. I gave you copies of those and compare and contrast to make sure that what we want to do is, is there's no gaps. Do we anticipate opening the meeting and closing the meeting then? Well, John. Depends what comes up. Um, Oh, uh, one thing, I know it doesn't have anything to do with the meeting or anything like that, but I have had dozens of people ask me, me. what is happening behind McDonald's. Oh. They're doing a lot of excavating, yeah. and we're supposed to be uh, transparent <laughs> in, in this yeah, board and everything, so <laughs> I would like to at least uh, be able to answer these people and, and even if I don't know. They um, came before the board and got approval for um, site plan, site development. For mm -hmm. site development. So basically they could put in roads and, and develop the site, but they have no approval for any buildings to be built upon those sites. They can't build pads or anything, but they can move dirt and they got all those approvals from the planning board. And I, I believe they're spending or, or doing that work with the anticipation that they would come forward at a later date <coughs> to with a site plan uh, approval for a building the buildings plural right mm -hmm. and it's a it's a bit of a leap of faith because it's rather costly to do all yeah. that i mean that's yeah. it's in the floodplain so there's a lot of uh, work bringing stuff up, up yeah. above flood elevation yeah. so no i was just going to say i mean i don't know but i'm hoping when spring comes we'll see something specific because they, they knew when they got the approval from you folks, the minute there was a building plan, they'd have to come back and submit um, a site plan application all over again. Yep. So. Secondly, is, uh, I'd like to say good luck to John Renlant and his attempt to become a selectman. <laughs> Does anybody have anything that they would like to discuss at Thursday's meeting since it's a blank, it's a blank slate? Do you have any topics that we could talk about rather than just showing up? Okay. We'll see you back here Thursday. <clears throat> Is there any other unfinished or other business? I, I just have a, a notation um, <clears throat> from the town administrator that the Board of Selectmen will not be meeting this Thursday um, to go to read the proposed warrant articles for their their slate they just they don't they're not required to by statute and so therefore the meeting that was cut somewhat proposed for Thursday the 5th is off the docket for them however we do not get a reprieve we'll all be back here okay. Thursday so that's all I have any public comments okay that brings us to item number nine so okay. Second. Oh, that was so fast. Okay. Bill and John. Meeting is over at seven forty-nine. All right.